Hi everyone, and welcome to the speedrunning tutorial for the Forest of Hope. Now, I'm going to be explaining the split route, which is where you don't complete Forest of Hope in a day. You complete it in two days, and there is a beginner version and an intermediate version, uh, and we'll be going th over that uh, in, d in some detail. I'm not going to explain every play-by-play -play that I do, um, but I am going to give you some detail of the route. So first thing, obviously, withdraw all your Pikmin, destroy this posy. Now, next, I want you to flower all your Pikmin. Um, so yeah, th like I said, this is the beginner version. If you struggle with something later, it's fine to flower 28 Pikmin instead of 25 Pikmin. Um, now, I do want you to flower all of your Pikmin, but if one of them doesn't get flowered, you can use it to grow that pellet, um, like I did just there. It is actually kind of better to have a flower Pikmin grab it, so that you can um, get the yellow pellet carried to the uh, red onion a little sooner. Um, but yeah, that's not a problem. So, um, the reason I say flower first is because it actually is faster to do that. Um, but it will leave you with a few of these leaves. Now you'll see that when I'm done with this, I'll have four leaves in my party. Um, that could be an issue for beginners. So it might make sense after this gate goes down. That's when you flower your Pikmin. I do that in my 54 minute run, my uh, PB at the time. Um, okay, but in this case, for sure, um, experiment with both. Uh, so what I'm going to try to do here is get all of my leaves on the red 10 pellet. So they're on the gate at the moment, and I'm going to I'm going to try to get all four of these leaves to go on the red 10 pellet. And I can do that by C-sticking forwards such that the flowers run ahead like this, and the leaves stay behind. And then I should be able to just tap A and time A so that I only throw leaves just like that. Now, that kind of maybe looked quite easy, but um, it takes a bit of practice. Right here, I want you to grab everything. Uh, it's okay to make a couple mistakes, um, but the main part is that you're supposed to get both of these bulb orbs. Now, one of them was auto-carried earlier, and then you're going to leave two of the one pellets there. Make sure you grab both bulb orbs, but leave two of the one pellets, because we'll be coming back for them later. So, in total, we have ten Pikmin in our squad, and we're going to drown them across the water. Now, you can literally just enter the water, just run straight into the water, and whistle your Pikmin. Now, you have to stand exactly where I stand, right here. Well, not exactly. It's actually quite lenient, but that makes the drown timer reset, and then you can just whistle them again. That's just what happens. Just execute that, and it will work, and then you can throw your 10 Pikmin onto the bridge. Now, um, obviously, that's slightly slower than what I do, again, in my main run, but we'll talk about uh, doing the faster version in the intermediate run when we get there. Uh, okay, so I want you to whistle these Pikmin and pluck up to about 21, 22. Uh, the more that you have, the more mistakes you can make in this section. So it's up to you, really. So just kill everything. The first thing that you need to do in this growth phase 2 is kill everything. Try and get as many leaves on the 5 pellets as you can, but really it doesn't matter. Um, and then grab this bulb orb and kill everything. As fast as you can. When everything is dead, that's when you can start collecting stuff. Now you can see that I made a mistake there. I had two Pikmin on the uh, red pellet. But that's okay, because I plucked extra, so it means that I'm not at the bare minimum carry for everything. I can just make a couple mistakes and it's okay. And that's what I want you to be able to do too. So right here, we're going to pluck up to... Uh, well, normally I used to say 41. Um, but actually, it's not really that important. And we're going to have some weird Pikmin numbers anyway, because this is kind of a, a weird route. Um, so yeah, just keep plucking until everything gets collected. Now I sped that up because it was a little lagging behind, but that's okay. Right, and now this is the reason that we move these pellets, because you're going to get them again. Just on the way to this gate, get them. Now I also want you to throw five of your flower Pikmin to the side. Don't put them on the gate, because we're going to whistle them back up now, and put them on the short bridge. We're doing this now because I wanted to grab everything in the second growth phase, and just make sure that there was nothing left behind. Uh, and we're also putting five Pikmin on that bridge instead of four. So yeah, it really just makes sense to do that after the, f the uh, second growth phase there. Right, so then we're going to pluck up again. And you'll notice that I actually had 77, which is the bare minimum number of Pikmin. Um, that's because the bulb orbs, the three, no sorry, four bulb orbs that are in this level so far, none of them dropped any pellets, which would have helped me get more Pikmin numbers. Um, so I'm showing you basically the worst case scenario. And in fact, as long as you do the pellet strat, which is in growth phase one, where you, slightly, you move them and then whistle off, as long as you do that, you will always end up with the bare minimum required. But that's okay, because we're going to grow more anyway. So there's plenty of uh, spare Pikmin in this run. Anyway, run round and stick these back on the gate as soon as you can. Notice that I'm C-sticking up and into the gate, even when my Pikmin aren't available to touch the gate. 
That's because they actually start running into the gate from a little uh, further back than you might think. Okay, so here, yeah, we're just going to C-stick into the little ball bulb and throw two Pikmin to the side. So I'm not going to really discuss exactly what I'm doing here with the yellow uh, onion root, or rather um, the growth phase three, as I call it. Um, but I do throw two reds to the side, and that's because I want you to grow 17. Remember, always grow 17 yellows. Until you're advanced and ridiculously good, please just get 17 yellows. Now, it, just losing the run to having a yellow die is just so disheartening, so please just never let it happen. It's just really ridiculous. Just grow 17 yellows, and you'll never lose a run because you have a yellow die. You can even have two die, and it's okay. Right, so, yeah, dismiss and put your reds over to the side, out of the way, that's quite important. And I want you to dismiss next to a pellet uh, from behind the pellet so that the uh, yellow immediately grabs on. Okay, so here, grab your red Pikmin, throw one big to the left and one big to the right. Just make sure that you destroy both both posies. It's okay if you don't, um, but you can practice that. And um, yeah, I'd recommend you just have a big throw left and right. Um, so yeah, toss one of your reds to the side. You don't need it anymore. And then grab one of the other pellets. Now, this is the thing that's slightly different from my rum. Uh, from my uh, my speed runs, I want you to grab all four of these Pikmin out of the ground, and then put two of them on the one pellet. Then grab your bombs. That's because the um, the the thing that's limiting us in this section is plucking all of the Pikmin. It's not grabbing bombs, so you you need to get that pellet moving soonest. Uh, now we're going to grab them Pikmin as well if we can. There's no need to, but if you want to, you can. Uh, now C stick your Pikmin into the bombs. And if you want, you can practice this here. You can do your long throws like that. One, two, three, straight into the gate. Um, if you struggle with the long throw kind of inputs, um, d definitely do consider practicing them. But if you do struggle with them, just walk up to the gate and just throw three so that you don't have to long throw. That works. All right, now the yellow section is done. Just gra gather all of your Pikmin. All right. Now, make sure all your Pikmin are out past the gate by uh, being in zoomed out camera, then C-stick fully left. Now, for the box, I want you to just barely step on the lip of the box and C-stick backwards away from the entrance of the box. That way, your Pikmin won't go idle at the back. Right. Now, you'll notice that I actually whistled again at the back of the box and then C-sticked up. That makes them um, reattach to the back of the box, but in a grouped formation so that they don't slip off and then drown. Um, so you will actually lose runs to that where a Pikmin will just slip off the box and start drowning in those pools, that's terrible. Yeah, you just really don't want that. So just play it consistent and safe. Do what I did with that whistle, that second whistle. Right, here I went slightly forwards and to the right to wake up the first Nagret, and then I juked it by going left. So we'll talk about the um, throw on this Nagret that I did here later. Um, yeah, we'll talk about that later. I wouldn't necessarily recommend doing that as a beginner. But here, when you actually fight the Nagret, unless you get perfect RNG where it gets stuck in the ground, you'll notice that you can't kill it. You have to do multiple cycles. So here, look what I do. One, two, three of those noises, those ant that it does, and then whistle off. Just do that and it will rebury. You will never lose Pikmin to the Snagret again. Do that until it comes up out of the ground slowly so that you can attack it and move on. Try to grab a flower if you can so that you can um, make sure only flowers are plucking this nectar. And try to flower up your bombs first, if you can, with this nectar here. It just makes it more consistent to flower than everybody else too. So max carry the Gaga counter with only reds. It's actually okay to get yellows on it, but just avoid yellows because you might accidentally throw a bomb and you don't want to throw bombs. Okay, so yeah, just max carry it. Now here I want you to C-stick into the can. Make sure all your yellows go idle, or most of them. Then pick up the Eternal Fuel Dynamo, and then you can whistle in the can again. And you might notice that you haven't got uh, Eternal Fuel Dynamo moving yet, so just C-stick onto it again and make it moving. Uh, make it get started. Right, now you can bomb this gate, which has uh, three bombs, but if you mess up, it's okay. You can just throw it to the side and um, you're not going to get, uh, you're not going to kill that Pikmin. That's fine. Okay, for this section, you should have seven to eight bombs. Just throw one bomb in front of you to the side so that it bombs the uh, Dwarf Bulbulb. Then look at my cursor position there for the second. For the second bulb, bulb, if you're messing that up, that up just really um, make sure that you can see the whole cursor and make sure it's not under the leaf. Yeah, um, just right to the side of the uh, bulb, bulb, and then do a quick one, two, throw two Pikmin, and then you'll be fine. All right, so here's where the run differs. I'm not going to go to this back portion of the map. I'm going to go and do this stuff over here. 
which is the Sagittarius and the Shock Absorber. Now, you can either wait for the uh, Geiger Counter to get collected, um, just in the base, or you can speed up that bridge, but if you're able to beat that bridge before it gets completed, then you probably shouldn't be doing this run anyway. Now, don't do this, what I did. Don't do that whistle. There's no reason to do that, I'm just showing off. Um, you can whistle your Pikmin before the cutscene starts, but don't do that. Or maybe try it once to see that it's really actually quite hard and not consistent, so don't do that. Anyway, right, so we're going to throw about 40 Pikmin up on this ledge. And I want you to go to Sagittarius first. Now, in my case, I did this kind of too fast, so only just did the bridge finish. But if you do everything at your reasonable pace, you should expect that that bridge to have already been finished by the time you get there, uh, as a beginner. Now, obviously, if you're beating that bridge, then you shouldn't be doing this route. You should be doing the intermediate one. Anyway, yeah, get Sagittarius moving. Um, now, I remembered that I only threw 43 or whatever Pikmin up on the ledge, and the max carry for Shock Absorber is 50, so I threw a few more up there. Um, uh, you don't really have to do that. Okay, now for this. To avoid any combat with this guy, um, what you have to do is whistle up and then bump it in the front of its nose with Olimar. Now, if you're urgent enough, uh, you'll be separated from your Pikmin, so no Pikmin will start attacking the Bulb Bulb. Uh, then just make sure that Olimar is closer to uh, the Bulb Bulb than any of the Pikmin on the Shock Absorber, and you'll notice that it's just completely safe. Um, the Bulb Bulb will run towards Olimar and not the Pikmin. So definitely do practice that a little bit, but um, yeah, it's actually super consistent when you, when you uh, get it down. Max carry Shock Absorber, and then we're done. That's the end of the day. And then on day three, we'll finish up the back area. If you want, you can try for a cutscene skip. Um, for some reason, I thought it would be a good idea to demonstrate perfect buffers, so I did it early, but there's no reason to do that. Um, if you're curious what my inputs were, you can go back and have a look at the exact inputs that I did for my timing. Um, I find it's pretty consistent to do it that way. There's other ways. And I do have a cutscene skip tutorial, which you can check out as well. Alright, we're going to speed up. Uh, and we're going to go and check out day three. So for day three in the beginner speedrun route, um, you do have a lot of time to spare, but I wouldn't recommend dawdling either. Um, yeah, there's, there's no way you would not have enough time to finish this day unless you have some major disaster. I don't know, maybe Armored Cannon Beetle um, kills all your Pikmin. But you should still have plenty of time to finish all the four remaining parts. And if you don't, just please practice it. Um, yeah, so make sure you grab all of your Pikmin, of course. And, of course, you've got your 17 yellows. Where, if you didn't grow 17 yellows, that's actually okay. You can grow um, two extra yellows using that yellow posy right there. So it's not a requirement, but it's still super recommended to get in the habit of growing 17 yellows at the yellow onion. All right, here you can dismiss and put your reds up on the ledge here. Um, that's enough reds to do the radiation canopy carry. Um, so that's at least 30, um, but going down to about 39 reds is fine. So we're going to come over here and do the Nova Blaster section. I want you to first kill this uh, dwarf ball ball, and then go into the middle of that like curve, throw your Pikmin while standing still, um, but don't hold A, just tap A, uh, and then you can wake up the Bulbul. Um, you can do what I do there, that's quite tricky to master, that sort of movement. Um, but yeah, just do uh, do practice this, because I've seen a lot of people mess this up. Uh, anyway, now that we've got Nova Blaster moving and the lure set up, we can do these long bomb throws. Now I have explained these in my um, speedrun explained video, but yeah, you can just throw two bombs on that wall and it destroys that gate super easy. Just Aim it precisely, do a consistent way, uh, try and do the same thing every time and you'll be fine. Right, so then throw your four bombs up on the ledge, and make sure you've only got bombs with you right now. And we're going to do a two cycle on this black gate. So throw about half, maybe six bombs onto this black gate, and then throw the remainder um, on the second cycle. Nice and easy, yeah? Don't go trying to do... Uh, you know, uh, a one cycle at this level. You can try it, but um, yeah, a lot of people will struggle with the exact, like, C-stick movements you need to be able to throw nine bombs very quickly. So just two cycle it, and you'll be comfortable. Alright, um, here you'll have to forgive me. So, I actually, uh, I forgot what the fastest thing to do is, and you'll see me kind of fluster, and I'm not done flustering. I'm like, oh, hang on, I should be doing the other thing. 
So, okay, fine. What you want to do is go and do Radiation Canopy first, and then go and do the other ones. That's because it's got further to move. Um, we are going to still uh, carry it with as many Pikmin as we can, but yes, do Radiation Canopy first. So, bomb this gate, and then make sure that you can load the Armored Cannon Beetle. Um, that, that, by that I mean just put it on camera. And if you can see that it's looking to the right, then you should be safe to just do this lure. So it's looking to the right, and then I want it to shoot down. And when it shoots down, as in not at the ship part, but out of the arena, um, then it should be totally safe, especially with 40 whatever big men are carrying it. Um, it's more difficult when you only have 30 Pikmin, but with 40 Pikmin, um, they're much faster so they can escape. Okay, this section is quite tricky. Just make sure that um, you've got 52, maybe 51 Pikmin, so that if you have a death here, it's totally safe and you can still carry everything. Um, but yeah, uh, just practice this section. I could talk about, you know, it, precision all day, um, but yeah, just, just practice it and uh, make sure you get direct hits um, with uh, precise and accurate movement. Um, so you can see that I actually uh, picked up one of the male shear grubs, shear grubs with Pikmin there. Um, that's so that I can grow some extras just in case I feel like I would have needed them. And I would recommend that you as a beginner do grow these um, remaining Pikmin. Uh, male shear grubs give you three Pikmin, which is insane. Um, so it'll make your forest navels ridiculously consistent if you grow uh, extra Pikmin here. You don't have to. And I'm not going to pluck these Pikmin, but you can totally do it. Okay, so the only thing uh, left to do is just speed up these two parts. So I'm going to speed up the back one first and then the front one, but I actually messed up. I meant to keep more Pikmin in my party so that I can speed up the radar as well. Um, but yeah, just speed them up reasonably equally. And just collect them, and that's it. Uh, if you like, you can try for your cutscene skips, um, but as a beginner, I would recommend that you actually go for plucking your Pikmin. Um, rather than getting cutscene skips. Um, getting the route down is much more important than get, going for cutscene skips. You can try them, obviously, but get the route down first. So, at this point, I shouldn't be going for cutscene skips. I should be uh, plucking the Pikmin from the Shear Grubs. Um, from the Pikmin that I grew just now, I should be plucking those and then flowering them up. And I'll show you what you're supposed to do. Um, in this case, they're leaves and they're kind of annoying to have. You can keep them into Forest Naval and it would be actually faster. But the simplest thing to do is just come over here on this patch of grass and flower them up. So obviously there's no more ship parts to collect, um, but we do want to be in a position so that we can do our forest naval as optimally as possible. We've got more time to spare on day three rather than day four, so we'll do it in that way. And just flower up your Pikmin. Now, uh, one small optimization is that you don't need to whistle them. You can just go to sunset when they come up as flowers, and that's fine. Okay, that's it. Um, that is the beginner route, the beginner split route. Now, I've kind of glossed over a lot of things, so um, it's kind of a play-by-play -play thing that I've been talking you through here. Um, if you're a little confused, that's perfectly normal. Go back and just look at what I did. Don't listen to what I'm saying. It, just, just look at what I did. I've got the input viewer up, and then try to execute that. If you have any other issues, though, I'm happy to help. So please, just join the Pikmin Discord. The Pikmin Speedrunning Discord is the, the knowledge base for this, so anyone would be happy to help. Um, but yeah, that's it for the beginner one. I'm going to now switch over to the intermediate one, and it will be slightly faster to do it that way, but if you're struggling, please start with the beginner one. Okay, here we go again. This is, of course, Forest of Hope still, um, but this is the faster version of the split route, or rather, what you should be going for after you've put a little bit more time into speedrunning this game. Uh, maybe you've learned a couple of the other levels and you want to get um, faster runs. Um, so, same as before, we're going to destroy this posy and flower up. Flowering up first is faster. Um, the only issue, like I said before, is that you don't have uh, stray leaves. Um, well, you do have stray leaves if you do it this way. So, of course, we split it. We split Forest of Hope because you can't. You, you literally are not fast enough to complete it in one day. Well, that's fine, but you can actually play with a split route in mind in such a way that if you're still, if you're actually fast enough, you can just try and go for Forest of Hope in a day, um, where you would keep going even past where I'm about to tell you um, to do our split. Um, you can even keep playing beyond that and try to get Forest of Hope in a day, but if you're too slow, um, then you can split it 
and it's the it's the most consistent way to do it. Um, so I'll tell you when that comes up. I'm kind of just rambling here. Um, but yeah, okay, so let's talk about execution. Uh, like before, try and copy this, where I'm about to get all of my um, leaves onto the red 10 pellet. Um, so notice that I C-stick forwards a bit to separate them, and then the leaves are lagging behind. I think I actually mess up here. Oh no, that was perfect. Never mind. <laughs> Uh, yeah, so then just destroy all of these, and like before, I want you to pick up absolutely everything. Um, but this time, we're not going to whistle off the, um, the the single one pellets. We're going to go to the long bridge for the Sagittarius with eight Pikmin. So here, it's going to be a one cycle drown. Now in this case, I'm going to throw the Pikmin into the water as quickly as I can, and then I'm going to whistle them. So it's just long enough that they will survive this drown all the way to the end. That swim, they can survive it. Um, but yeah, if you still struggle with it, that's fine. You can just see stick them to the water like I did in the other part. Right, last time I plucked some Pikmin, but this time I'm going to say you don't have to. You'll see why, but this is growth phase 2 now, so I want you to, again, kill everything. Just destroy everything, kill everything, and um, yes, kill everything. And try and put as many leaves on the five pellets as you can. Um, you don't have to, but try to. And this time, we're going to uh, put four Pikmin on the bridge already. So that we don't have to do it later. Um, but you'll notice that I left a lot of um, a lot of those one pellets there. And that's actually fine. You can leave some pellets. And we're going to get them later in something that I call Growth Phase 2.5. Which is just a silly name um, for picking them up on the way to the gate. Uh, yeah, so... If I didn't put the Pikmin on the short bridge, I could have picked up all those pellets. Um, but yeah, I, I feel like putting those Pikmin on the short bridge is fine. You just have to—you don't—you don't have to worry about it. You can forget about it. And then we're going to pick up all of the pellets just on the way to the gate right now. So I plucked up a few more than 41 because I know I'm going to be picking up these pellets, and I just want you to, yeah, get all the remaining pellets. If there are any um, pellets to the left of me now, from growth phase one that the bulb orbs dropped, um, you can also get them at that moment. Um, but yeah, nice and easy. Load up this gate, and that's actually quite fast. Um, you can use the quarter bell, that little jingle that happens when you're a quarter of the way through the day, to determine um, how good you think your pace is. Uh, Forest of Hope is definitely the hardest level in the game. It's just because there's so many micro interactions, you know, you have to deal with Pikmin management, and it's kind of the reason that people stop speedrunning this game, because they realize that there's actually kind of a skill floor, a skill ceiling, rather, that you have to puncture through. But honestly, just play smooth and you'll break through it in no time. Um, and that's, again, the reason that we're doing the split route is because uh, it gives you more leeway. And, yeah, it gives you more time to um, make those mistakes that beginners and intermediate people will be making. And, hey, everyone makes mistakes. But the idea is to uh, reduce that. <laughs> reduce the amount of mistakes that you make that cost you time. Anyway, right. So this is actually the exact same as before. At the intermediate level as well, I want you to be growing 17 yellows. For God's sake, just get 17. Uh, I was dumb back in my day. <laughs> I only ever got 15 yellows because that's what I saw IID do. It loses a little bit of time. Yes, it does lose some time to grow yellows. But just do it. Because you won't be losing runs to yellow deaths. I know I've stressed that point enough now. Okay. Oh, also, when you throw in uh, kill, the ba uh, kill that ball bulb, you can throw mostly leaves, so that when it shakes off the Pikmin, um, it doesn't bud as many flower Pikmin. It doesn't turn flower Pikmin into bud Pikmin. Right, anyway. So yeah, dismiss to pick up these pellets. After you dismiss on the first one, or rather that's the second pellet, you can then start punching this posy. And do one big throw to the left, one big throw to the right, so that you can get both of these posies. And pick up the final pellet over here. Easy enough now, throw one red to the side, uh, pick up this Dwarf bulb, and then pick up the furthest pellet with the other Pikmin. Then pluck all four of these Pikmin again, like before, where we're going to pick up the furthest pellet with two Pikmin. I actually messed this up. That's okay, though. Uh, yeah, you do want two Pikmin to be carrying, uh, carrying that pellet, because like I said before, that is the uh, limiting factor in this section, plucking the Pikmin. If you can get a head start and pluck more Pikmin, that's up to you. But I feel like getting a head start is quite nice. 
Anyway, uh, I, I do recommend at the intermediate level to be doing these long throws because they're really not that hard and it sets you up for um, being able to long throw in the future as well. Not much to talk about now until we get to the box. Just make sure you're whistling all around and make sure that all your Pikmin are with you. Um, 12 Pikmin are on the bridge, so your Pikmin total should be whatever's in the field, minus 12, obviously. So in this case, 81. 80 is usually what I say is good. Um, but okay, at, at this bridge, at this box, you're going to be C-sticking backwards and whistle again to group them up and they will never slip off the back of the box. Right, get all your Pikmin together and if this bulb is on this side of the uh, big bulb bulb, if the dwarf is on that side, you do need to kill it, otherwise it will eat your um, gag counter carrying Pikmin. Alright, now we have to talk about the uh, Snaggerit throw that I do now. So this is a, a new tech. Um, I'm going to throw a Pikmin onto the head of the Snaggerit. Time it well. Oh, I messed up. Well, look at how I did it in part one. <laughs> uh... But the idea is, um, a Snaggerit will rebury if it's taking damage but can't attack any Pikmin. So if it's got a Pikmin on its head, you can um, just uh, throw a Pikmin on its head, then get out of its threat range, and then whistle it back, um, and the uh, the Snaggerit will rebury. It's not actually the whistling back that uh, makes it rebury, it's just being out of the threat range that makes the Snaggerit rebury. Um, but yeah, just try to execute it, and it's actually really quite easy to time when you get the timing of it. It's easy to not mess up. I think the reason I messed up on, on this one actually was because I noticed that a Pikmin had drowned uh, and then also I woke up the, uh, the first Snaggerit again. Um, so that was me being bad actually. Alright, but um, it's can, part, then can again. You need to whistle the Pikmin out of the can, don't forget that. Uh, yep. Yeah. This time though, uh, Eternal Fuel Dynamo should be able to be, should always be moving. You should always have enough Pikmin for that. And actually, I messed up this gate throw again, and then twice. I made two mistakes, actually. Um, but it's okay, just take your time if you have a mistake. Uh, that's the thing, actually, yeah, you need to just relax. If you have a mistake, don't panic. That's the panic that will kill you, it's not the mistake. Right, anyway, um, so look at my cursor position, and you'll see that's the perfect cursor position to uh, get all of these throws. Uh, you can actually dismiss there as well to get the dwarf um, bulb bulb carried closer to the ship. Um, and we're going to actually use uh, our red Pikmin to pick up the Dwarf Bulb Bulb, and we're going to collect that for some extra Pikmin. That will help out later on, so let's do that now. Grab up the uh, Dwarf Bulb Bulb, and oh, don't forget your uh, yellow. It, obviously, if you had seven yellows there, one of them wouldn't be carrying it. That's fine. Okay, and again, in this case, uh, we're going to load up the wall and just run straight past, just like that. I didn't really explain anything then, but... Um, yeah, it just takes practice. If you need any uh, more in-depth explanations, yeah, just don't hesitate to ask. Um, this is just a play-by-play. -play. I'm just literally post-commentating. Uh, minimal edits here. The idea, though, is to just lower it um, so that the bulb bulb is as far away from the uh, Nova Blaster as possible. Do what you can to make that uh, throw consistent. Make sure that you're doing the same thing every time, rather. And um, in this case, it's okay for Nova Blaster to uh, be moving slowly. We're actually going to use that to our advantage later. You can C-stick your Pikmin onto the Bulb Bulb there, so that you don't have to dismiss. That way you only have 9 bombs when you come over here. And if you want to at this level, you can try going to one cycle that gate. I actually tried to there, but then I messed up my uh, C-sticking or my Pikmin throws. Um, so I did it in two cycles anyway. That's fine. Uh, grab all your Pikmin, and I'm actually going to whistle off the Nova Blaster now. That's because uh, we can use it for cutscene skips later. But now, we've done the back area with uh, the Nova Blaster. This is where we're going to split route. We're not going to go to the radar, or radiation canopy or anything. You can dismiss, grab only your reds, and we're going to do the uh, front area now. Down to 17, 16 Pikmin. Obviously there are 12 on the uh, bridges. So um, they're going to take us to a total of uh, roughly 30, just under. And um, obviously, I played really well then, so I beat this bridge. If you're beating this bridge, maybe you should be going for the full one-day route. But um, yeah, it, at, at your level as an intermediate player, you shouldn't necessarily be beating this bridge. You should get to this bridge, and it's already completed. You don't have to wait for anything. Um, unfortunately, I don't know how to play that slowly anymore. Uh, 
But um, yeah, you can just wait for that bridge to fully finish if you do beat it. But yeah, you should really... Um, most likely that bridge won't uh, will be finished by the time you get there. Okay, so load up Sagittarius with your Pikmin. And now we're going to do uh, Shock Absorber. So remember that I threw actually four bombs onto the radiation canopy zone. Um, but I left those Pikmin there. I haven't dealt with them yet. And so that's why I want you to do Shock Absorber last. Because I'm going to load up Shock Absorber. And look at how I do this. I um, just dismiss onto it because I only have red Pikmin with me. It makes the dismiss easier. And I'm going to lure this Bulb Bulb. Just make sure Olimar is closer to the Bulb Bulb than any of the Pikmin. Or rather the, pick the Bulb Bulb closer to the Pikmin. You know what I mean. And I'm going to run down the ledge this time through the water gate and back to the bombs. This is just probably the fastest way to um, the fastest time that you can bomb this gate. Uh, if you want to go for cutscene skips, maybe do the bombing of the gate um, before you go back to the landing site. Um, but yeah, honestly this is fine. Just bomb this gate. Um, this isn't the final route that you'll be doing anyway. Eventually you'll be going for the full six day route. And if we make make it back in time, we can try for the cutscene skip again on the Nova Blaster, but I was a little too slow, or rather the part was a little too fast. That's fine. And we'll get the area cutscene. Uh, I'm actually just going to speed it up from now, uh, and I'll see you at the start of day three. So here we go. This is just a clean-up day. Uh, this is actually... There's even less to do, because we've already moved the Nova Blaster. Um, the difference between the Intermediate and Beginner one is obviously we've moved the Nova Blaster and bombed more gates. So we don't have to do that on this day. Um, but trust me, this is the faster way to do it. Now, I left those Pikmin in the ground. I haven't even plucked them yet. And I'm not going to pluck them even still. Uh, because they will mature into flowers by the time I'm ready to pluck them. So I don't need, I don't need to flower them. Uh, but okay, yeah, I'm just going to try to get the cutscene skip on the Nova Blaster. And let's go and just get the Radiation Canopy. And the two remaining other parts too. So throw down until you have about 52 in your party. Like before, uh, it's better to have slightly more than 50. So that uh, if you have a death, it's totally fine and you can just continue. And if you don't have deaths, you can use your time to grow more Pikmin. Okay, for ACB, you see that he slightly he, he started walking to the right. He start he he walked in the direction of like two o'clock uh, in his arena. That's kind of the ideal situation. If that doesn't happen, it's okay to wait for a bit. Just wait there and wait for him to walk in in that direction. Uh, it's because if he doesn't do that walk, it's less likely that um, the pigman will survive, uh, just because of the awkward positioning of the uh, the waypointing. Uh, the way that the Pikmin carry the part out of the arena. Um, here again, we're just aiming for direct shots on all of the uh, male Sheer Grubs. Prioritize the Sheer Grubs, not the Bulb Orbs. Because obviously, if a Sheer Grub bites a Pikmin... Um, if a Sheer Grub bites a Pikmin, you have to get a direct headshot. Otherwise, um, it's definitely going to kill that Pikmin. So yeah, just prioritize killing them. And in this case, I probably didn't need to grow extra... Um, I could have just left. Um, I could have just left uh, that area with a 2131 carry rather than carrying a male sheer grub. But I wanted to emphasize the point, which is that you should be getting extra Pikmin where possible. And in Forest of Hope, that's the perfect opportunity to get extra reds so that it makes your Forest Naval super consistent. If you have like, I don't know, 97 Pikmin going into Forest Naval, that's just a really healthy amount to have. Anyway, I'm just loading up these final two parts and you'll notice that it's that's it. It's such a quick day three. There's just really not much left to do. Um, and uh, last time I said you should probably be plucking while these cutscenes are happening, not going for the cutscene skips. So this time I'm kind of emphasizing that point. Uh, but I did kind of want to swag and get the final cutscene skip, but I still failed. Okay, but pluck until you have at least 79 reds. Um, try to have more than 79, but remember that 77 is the bare minimum number of reds. So I actually go to sunset here with, I think, like 79. Okay, fine. That's the end of day three. Uh, and that's the end of this tutorial. So I know it's been a bit quick, 
and I've definitely blasted I've blasted through it. Um, but there's just not been any videos explaining the split route out um, on YouTube, as far as I know. Uh, well, actually, I did make one years ago, but with no commentary. Anyway, this is the updated version of the both the uh, beginner and intermediate split routes. Uh, when you get good at the intermediate one and you start maybe beating the bridge, you should just be going for the six-day route. And if you don't get the six-day, that is, if you don't complete it in one day, you can still um, end the day with the, the two remaining ship parts, like, right near the ship. Just land again and clean up. It's that easy. That's all I have to show you. Um, please do try Pikmin 1 as a speed game. It is so cool. Uh, unfortunately, Forest of Hope is a massive hurdle, but I believe in you. You can make it. Okay, peace out. Good luck.